Twizzle. Weeknights, do the Twizzle with me. Everybody, start in doing the Twizzle. Starting at 9, 8 central on MeTV. Hi, I'm John Mallison. Welcome to Connect With Me here on this Thursday morning, live on the showroom floor at Ventura TV. Today is debate day. Three candidates running for office, Fresno Unified School District. Your phone calls are very important, a very important topic today. Election day is just around the corner, November the 6th. They're running for the school board. You'll want to call in 559-265-4331. We're back in a moment. Well, you know by me by now, if you've been watching this program since April, then you know I'm a, bit, I'm a big sports fan. I love the San Francisco Giants, and today I'm grinning from ear to ear. But you know what? It's not over. It's only one game, but Pablo Sandoval, the Panda, had a great game last night. I'm sure you guys all saw it. Uh, three home runs, only the fourth player in Major League history to hit three homers in one World Series game. Of course, uh, Babe Ruth did it, Reggie Jackson did it, Albert Pujols did it, and the Panda did it last night in San Francisco. No point in showing highlights. If you wanted to see the game, you've already seen it. Game two is tonight. We'll see what happens. Today is a big day here on the set of Connect With Me. We're talking about politics and debating the issues at Fresno Unified School District. The election is on November the 6th, and you will decide whether or not some of the incumbents like Carol Mills or Janet Ryan should in fact be re-elected. Live in our studio right now, from left to right, is Andy Doris. He is running uh, for Fresno Unified School District Board, area number five. He's running against Carol Mills. Carol Mills decided not to show up for this debate. Also in the middle is Carol Bloomgren and George Whitman to the right. They are running in Fresno Unified Area Number 6 against the incumbent Janet Ryan, who has been a guest on this program, but she also decided not to be here today for our debate. So Carol Mills, Janet Ryan, two no-shows, but we've got three candidates and the very important topic of Fresno Unified and what to do about the superintendent, what to do about the dropout rates, the graduation rates, about kids that are falling through the cracks, the truancies that are going on at Fresno Unified as we speak today. How many kids, stop and think about this right now, at this very moment, how many kids are truant in all the schools combined at Fresno Unified right now, today, as we speak? We'll address those topics, 559-265-4331, back in a moment with our three guests. Ventura TV Appliance Center. We're the save energy, save time, save money place. The Energy Star qualified number one rated high efficiency cabrio from Whirlpool Place. You heard right. Right now, save big on select Whirlpool cabrio laundry pairs and pay no interest when paid in full within six months. At the hometown low price, think outside the big box place. Since 1951, Ventura TV Appliance Center, we're working hard to be your place. And welcome back. It's debate day here on Connect With Me, the three candidates uh, running for office. We've got Andrew Doris, Carol Bloomgren, and George Whitman. Welcome, everybody. Thank you. Thank you for coming here. A very important topic. Andrew, let me start with you, and then we'll just go down the row here. Um, should Michael Hansen, the superintendent, either resign or be fired? Very blunt question. Well, you know, first of all, if I were elected as a trustee, I would like to sit down with uh, Michael Hansen and have him explain to me why he should continue as the leader of Fresno Unified as our superintendent. Um, there's not a lot of transparency in how things operate uh, within the district, uh, budgetary. I think that 
uh, from a budgetary sense and uh, you know the graduation statistics the truancy statistics I think are uh, massaged before they get to the public um, should he be fired though in your opinion is he doing a good job is he doing a well, bad job He's well, the I'm leader not, of the group, of course. And I'm not, I'm not uh, to answer your question, I'm not impressed with his leadership or his leadership style. I think that he's created a culture of bullying and intimidation that our teachers are forced to, to operate under every day. And yeah. you couple that with uh, the, the pressure to achieve standardized test scores, which are an artificial measure of how our students are doing, how our teachers are doing. It's just a... A horrible situation for uh, our teachers to be trying to educate our students. Let Carol chime in here. What do you think about Michael Hansen? In or out? Well, as I've uh, told my constituents when they ask me that same question, I say, you know, leadership leaves evidence. And just any, the board's job is to fill that spot, either by removing and hiring and firing and whatnot. And so part of that is evaluating. And in an evaluation, you look at the evidence. You look at the performance level. And to dovetail on what Andy was just saying, the the frustration of, of teachers, the lack of communication with, with the community, the uh, lack of transparency, the bureaucracies that are being built are are not, to me, a good indication of, of good leadership so and direction. So we would definitely need to have that discussion as to whether, you know, staying or going and taking the hard look at the evidence. George, I'm sure you have an opinion, right? <laughs> yes, John, I do. Thank you, for number one, for having us here. No problem. Because this is a school district, I'm going to give him grades. First of all, he got a B or an, an A minus or a B for when he took over because the district was in dire straits. It was about to be taken over from the state. He came in and basically turned the district around. He turned it around financially. And, and test right. score wise on a relative basis. Right. Now though, I give him maybe a C minus or a D plus. Because? Very, very, very lack of communication. There's, there's well, it's got to be more than a lack of communication. What, what, what else could it be? Well, th let's start with lack of communication. Okay. That, tr to use the term, it trickles down to everything else. Okay. I call it, you know, it's the Caesar complex. I say it, thou for you shall do it. <laughs> okay. That lack of communication to the students, to the teachers, and to the public causes problems because there's no reason or rhyme for why they're doing something just because Caesar said so right let's pause on that Caesar moment just for a second here we do have a phone call we want our audience to chime in here 265-4331 good morning you're on connect with me what's your question uh, it's not actually for that I'm looking for a phone number oh no 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 week. I'm sorry we got it sorry Lauren yeah go ahead um, let me just explain something here. <laughs> this show is a debate about the Fresno Unified School District. If you want to call in, turn down the sound on your television set. I apologize, didn't mean to be rude, but we had to cut you off. Uh, this is about a debate uh, with three candidates regarding Fresno Unified, 265-4331. You've got to stick to the topic, folks, if you're going to call in and ask a specific question, or we won't take your phone call because we're limited on time. Go ahead and pick up on the Caesar uh, moment there. So, so back to lack of communication. If he improves his communication skills, if he's willing to communicate and make explain the reasons why we are doing things then there's no reason for him to go right okay but it, but if he doesn't then he can't stay okay let me put some numbers up on the screen if I could uh, right now we're gonna look at those uh, numbers here as far as the graduation rates are concerned with some of the high schools here in the Fresno area there they are they speak for themselves starting with Roosevelt, Edison, Bullard, Sunnyside, Hoover, Fresno, McLean. Now keep those up there just for a minute if you could Alex. Uh, these come from the California Department of Education. They're fairly recent uh, numbers. Um, Carol, let's start with you. What do you like and what don't you like about some of the numbers that you see there? Well, the, the numbers that you see there come from Fresno Unified. They're the ones that feed that information to the state. And so, as anybody can, can skew, can tweak, can twist numbers, whatever direction they want to go to. Looking at Hoover last year in June 2000, or this year, 2012, they had 322 students graduate. On average, they'll have anywhere from six to 700 incoming freshmen. Well, if you do the simple math, um, that's 
76 percent graduation rate doesn't seem to pan out. Now where are these students going? We don't have a good tracking record. We don't have a good tracking system and that's one All of right. the things that we really need to address is where are these kids going? Now I will say Andy that among Latinos uh, 2011 about 69 percent of those Latino uh, students graduated. Black students only 64 percent last year. Michael Hansen announced just this year that he wants to create a graduation task force that would invite in, involve 25 members of the community. What do you think about that? Well, the graduation task force gave its its recommendations last year to the school district, and what was really telling right off the get go was that when when my opponent Carol Mills was asked about the graduation task force and what uh, recommendations she would implement, her first response was, "Well, the task force didn't tell us what uh, recommendations they wanted us to implement." That in that comment that she made more than once is a uh, just lack a, of initiative. Is well, what you're it, saying. it's a lack of leadership. Right. It it, it just goes to um, her inability to step forward and and make a decision that is uh, best for our students. All right. On those graduation rates, uh, we're going to let George Whitman comment on the other side of the break. Two six five four three three one is the number here live on Connect with me. You're going to have to re-remind me the question, but in the 30-second break, I'll forget everything. I'd like to call it. Weeknights on MeTV. <laughs> Who loves you, baby? You shouldn't ask. It's Kojak. Well, it sounds like music to my ear. On MeTV. Look at me. Why do we love him? Maybe it's the way I call my hair. Or maybe it's his trusty right-hand man. Floor bite. Cracker. 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 Kojak! <laughs> But I, I just wanted to hear how it sounded. Telly Savalas is Kojak. Story of my life, baby. Weeknights at 12 30, 11 30 Central on MeTV. Who loves you? Today is debate day here, Fresno Unified School District, 265-4331. If you have a specific question, you can call in. And let's put those graduation numbers back up on the screen just for a minute. Uh, what's your comment, George, about the graduation rates, the graduation task force, uh, 25 members of our community uh, being involved in this? Uh, we can see the numbers up on the screen now. Well, basically two points. Number one, if you look at the graduation task force, it was stacked with people that Hansen picked, not the community picked. Secondly, in regards to the graduation rate, Fresno B did an article, I believe, in November of last year and, and taken on to what Carol said. There was 100% in ninth grade. By 12th grade, the number of people that were in the ninth grade were 50%. Where did they go? Certainly, they didn't all move out of town. So we have to, find, we, we have to track where the children are going to be able to truly address what the true dropout rate is. Okay, how about putting the numbers up, uh, if we can, on the dropout rate? Not the graduation rate, we've already seen that, but we're going to put the numbers up for the dropout rate. Many administrators and teachers and community leaders believe the dropout rate in Fresno Unified is 30 to 40 percent, maybe even beyond 50 percent. The district is saying, no, you're wrong. It's 15 to 20 percent. And you say what, Andy? Well, I think, I think, it's, it? I think it's the higher number. Um, again, I think that uh, the statistics are being manipulated. And as far as Fresno... By who? Manipulated by who? Uh, by uh, Michael Hansen and the district before they're sent north to Sacramento. And then they get the numbers back and regurgitate them to the public and say that that's the, the truth. When, when I, have a, I have a report here that was done by the Western Association of Schools and Colleges that was done on campus at Fresno High by Fresno High, mm -hmm. and there, uh, the first line in the report says that half of the children that, uh, that start at Fresno High don't graduate from Fresno High. So that's a 50% dropout rate at Fresno High. But the a dropout rate among Hispanics, blacks, Hmongs, uh, Asians is even higher than 50%. It's in the 60s and 70s. Uh, I think that that's, that's where we can uh, make a connection with some of these CB, CBOs, the community-based organizations that are um, really connected with the homes. That takes a lot of work for the district to reach out to those organizations and, and use them as a conduit to reach those families. They don't want to do that work. 
because that leads them to have to relinquish some of their control. Uh -huh. They want absolute control over those numbers, and they and they don't want to involve the community. Carol, what's your take? Is it what the district says, 15 to 20 percent dropout rate, or much higher? In I, your it, opinion? It, in my opinion, it is much higher, just based on on many of the reports that we're seeing that aren't coming from Fresno Unified. And Andy is, real, is right on the money. We have to get to the parents. We have to get into these homes to help parents understand the need for their children to go to school. Education is a way out of poverty. In Fresno, having such the high poverty rate we have, there's no other way but to get into the homes and using the CBOs and reaching out and doing things different and not relying solely on a university uh, parent university to reach parents. We have to have multi, multi, multiple uh, programs to reach and get into the homes. I'll let you answer in a second, George. Let's take this phone call here. Good morning, you're on Connect With Me specifically now. What's your question regarding Fresno Unified and this is a topic today? Does tutoring make a big difference in uh, their graduating? And uh, I know some are into it, some, some don't mind being tutored. And that's the first question. Second question, when they don't graduate, where do they go after that? Do they have, okay, other than, a, they do have another school to try again uh, until they graduate? What's the, what are the percentile that want to graduate, even though they didn't graduate that time? And those are the two questions. Uh, Pick it up, George. Well, there Thank is the, there's there's the Fresno Adult School for people mm -hmm. that can get their GED general education diploma uh, by going to the the adult school, but the broader issue is why are the kids dropping out? Mm -hmm. And two of the key components of my particular platform is we need to focus on kindergarten through third grade so the kids get the basics so that they understand before they go to the next grade. It's like building a foundation on a house. No foundation, the house is going to fall over. We have to develop and give the resources so K-3, the kids get it. And back to the question of the tutors, right now the, the teacher to student ratio is anywhere from 25 in kindergarten up to 30, 34, up to third grade. It's entirely too high. And in the good old days, we not only had a teacher for 20 to 25 kids, we had a teacher's aide. Quickly, what do you believe? 15 to 20 percent dropout rate or more than 50? I believe it's closer to 40 to 50. Because? Because of the data. The Fresno yeah, Bee article. Data? Okay. The, as Where one, did the Bee get their information? They. I'm not saying I don't no, believe no, the no, Bee. No, I read all the Bee articles, too. It's I, I very agree. Interesting. And it's, it's the numbers. The Fresno Unified publishes what their population density right. is per year. Right. Well, they compared what it was when the kids were in ninth grade. Then they right. compared it in twelfth grade. That was and a great was series the Bee did on, mm -hmm. on the dropout rate. And, and uh, the, you know, it just it, it magnified the huge problem that's going on at Fresno Unified. We're going to be back now. Hang on. We're back in a moment here on Connect With Me. Your phone calls are important. 265-4331. And your phone calls, I might add, are very important. Is taking care of laundry taking too much of your time? Have you become a missing mom? With a new fast, efficient washer and dryer from Ventura TV Video Appliance, you'll spend more of your day the way you want on this Omana Super Capacity Washer Dryer Pair is now just $6.99. And this Heavy Duty Maytag Super Capacity Washer Dryer Pair is only $8.99. Don't spend your life on laundry. Upgrade today at Ventura TV Video Appliance and save. is 265-4331. Specific questions about Fresno Unified today and the t uh, guests are George Whitman, uh, Carol Bloomberg and or Bloomgren I should say and Andrew Doris. I want to get into this issue about dropouts again. I want to continue this conversation. Now Javier Guzman, he runs the Chicano Youth Center. He said half the Latino kids are dropping out Half of the dropouts are committing crimes. Fresno Unified School District, District has become a feeder program for the California prison system. Yep. He also said that a couple of years ago, he tried to create a city dropout commission, but Michael Hansen, the superintendent, yep. threw nothing but roadblocks in his way, wouldn't bring it up at uh, the Fresno Unified School Board. The city council wasn't allowed to bring it up. 
what's going on here? Well, that's a that's a great example of how the you know the public is kept in the dark as to what's going on. Um, that's how the prison system uh, looks into the future as to how many prisons they're going to have to build. Is they look at the reading proficiency rates among third graders. Do you believe Ho uh, Javier Guzman, who says the Fresno Unified School District has become a feeder program for the California prison system? Do you believe that? Well, I'd have to look at the, some statistics as to how many uh, Fresno Unified students are actually incarcerated, but I would tend to believe that there's some truth in that statement. I how mean, about, look, how about you, Carol? Go ahead. Yes, I, I agree as well that there you is think, some great You think they're going truth. into the prison system more than they're staying in school? Well, when you couple poverty with lack of education, there's not a lot of options for you out there. And so to survive, to feed yourself, to feed your family, to, to make ends meet, you're, you're, res, you know, you're, res, you're left to making choices that aren't uh, necessarily law-abiding. And so there, I think there is some great truth to that. You know, stopping this commission from happening, I mean, uh, the mayor, the city manager, Andreas Borges, Lee Brand, Larry Westerland, Blong Jong, and Cynthia Sterling, at the time, a couple of years ago, they were all opposed to bringing up this issue about a dropout commission on the council because they didn't want to create friction between the city and Fresno Unified. George, why? Okay, here we go again. Why? Lack of communication. We purposely are well, not communicating to Why was the city scared to ruffle the feathers of Fresno Unified? Maybe the Caesar Hansen rubbed off on them. I don't know. But here's another way to address that dropout rate. We need to bring back vocational education like what we used to have. Okay, I was just going to ask you, okay, the dropout rate is happening. The uh, test scores are up a little bit. Uh, graduation rates are up a little bit. How would you fix the dropout problem? First and foremost, we don't need education committees that are paid for with big money, consultants. What we need, John, are citizens' committees. As I walk the precincts, I talk to people, and their concerns are many. And you know who knows the answers? The kids that are dropping out, the parents of the kids that are dropping out, maybe the Fresno PD probation, why aren't we having the stakeholders in on these committees? How would you fix the dropout problem? By, by making school relevant again. If you talk to most students, uh, whether they're straight A's or, or failing, for many of those kids, school has become boring. It is be, they become disinterested in, and, and why, why go to school? It's become irrelevant. So we need to put relevancy back into it with vocational ed. How would you fix a, uh, the dropout problem? The, the same thing. The kids are falling out of the bottom because there's no hook. If Do you have a if, plan? Yeah. If uh, Career technical education, vocational training, there's, there's so many opportunities with business leaders and the CBOs in this town mm -hmm. to get something. The, the highest among those, those uh, high school graduation rates, you add Duncan Polytechnic in there, they have a 97% graduation rate yeah. at Duncan Pretty Polytechnic. Cool, huh? Tremendous. Why don't we have a thriving uh, technical education yep. program at every single high school? Yes. Uh, kids of low income can't get across town. They can't get to the high school in their own district. How can we expect them to get all the way to some magnet program th that is across town? All right. So there are some people who say that Fresno Unified is paying attention to the upper echelon students, the ones that are going on to college, USC, UCLA, Harvard, who knows where and the bottom half is being ignored, in fact, dumped on. Okay, um, Proposition 30 would dump $7.4 million into a preschool program at Fresno Unified. A lot of people say, you know what, you should take that money, that $7.4 million, and create vocational programs in Fresno Unified because not every student's gonna go to college. Would you agree or disagree with that, Carol? I would agree with that, but to help stop the flood of of underperforming students at the higher levels, we do have to go to that K through third and really beef up the reading program. So you it's okay to read, put the preschool in. I, I don't know about preschool, but we because we need the work. We need the work in the K through three. If they can't read, then a vocational ed program isn't going to be much help because well, they can't you start read. Start reading in preschool so, for the most part. Correct, but we have students right now that aren't reading in first and second grade, so are we supposed to ignore them? We need to beef up the K through the three. The reason they're not reading, though, is because they're not getting it in preschool. Okay, well, 
they're now in second grade. Right. We can't put them back in preschool. We have to help them now. We can't ignore them. Right. So by having a master plan and a focus, by addressing the K through three. But helping the future in, students, though. Correct. But let's fit, let's not ignore the students we have now. We right. can't ignore the, we're supposed to throw them away, too. No. We need to address them now by, by giving them some relevancy in their, you know, in understanding why they right. need education. How about you, Andy? Well, statistics show that if you have a kid that can read when he comes into kindergarten and you have one that is behind, if you have smaller class sizes and we take some of that money and reduce those K through third grade class sizes, okay, you can, that kid can catch up by the time they get into third but grade. But are you in the favor of the vocational kill. programs? Oh, yeah. yeah. Yay or nay? Oh, yeah. Okay. A absolutely. All right. Another mm -hmm. quick call, and we'll get to George here. Good morning. You're on Connect with me. How are you? Good morning. I'm doing well, and I appreciate your program. You guys have a, a great panel. I think they would all be wonderful. Uh, quick you. And quick question. I want to say that um, I never went to preschool. I can read. I can write. <laughs> I can do math, and um, I do think it's very important to do many of the things that uh, they are saying, especially vocational. And my comment was, don't you think that uh, because of lawsuits is why we have lost vocational in the schools? George, pick it up. Thank you for the call, sir. Good. I I can't answer the question to lawsuits, but I can give you some numbers that are very relevant. Fresno Unified today has 12 units, three nine units of auto shop three units of carpentry. Clovis has 20 units of auto shop, 20 units of carpentry, and 20 units of ag construction with a specialty in welding. Clovis right. Unified's dropout rate is 7%. Fresno Unified's is anywhere from 30 to 50. Okay, we've got two minutes left. I want to ask you, first of all, Andy, you're running against uh, Carol Mills in Area 5. What chance do you have of beating her? I think I have a good chance. Um, I've get, got really good response from uh, the, the precincts that I'm walking. I've spoke to many uh, people in the district. I, I don't run into too many people that say, no, I'm not going to vote for you. Okay. Uh, Carol and George, you're running against uh, Janet Ryan. Your chances of winning are what? My chances of winning are, are pretty good because... You think being yes. the incumbent Janet Ryan? Yes, because as I've spoken with many of the, the constituents, she's been there for eight years. And when she started, Hoover High was a performing school. It was, it was, it was looked upon as a, as a good school. It is now an underperforming school and has been for the last three years, if not longer. My son goes there. I get the letter. I know. Some people might look at you, George, and say, you have no chance of beating Janet Ryan, the incumbent. Your response would be what? I'm going to make a very a projection that may seem arrogant, but it's based on the fact that this is the second time I've walked every home in the precinct. I expect to win five candidates over 50% of the vote right. based on my conversations and the agreement with the people that I talked with, yeah, the constituents. It's, it's a very contentious board. They don't all get along. How are you going to make a difference when people don't get along on the board? Carol, quickly. Well, that's, that's a hard one because of See, you can't get anything done when nobody gets along. Exactly. So we have to leave our egos at the door, and we have to come down and say what's going to be You're best You're going to be able to do kids. that, leave your ego at the door? Absolutely. How about you? Oh, it's about the kids. That's why I'm running. How about you? Common sense and business sense, period. All right. Sadly, yeah. we're out of time. You got the last word. I apologize. That doesn't mean you're going to win, but good luck to all of you. Thank you, Thank John. you very much for coming in. Thank I really you, appreciate it. Good debate. Thanks, and uh, we're going to be back tomorrow with more of Connect With Me, and we'll be talking with three more candidates running for President Unified School District Board. We're going to be back tomorrow. We'll see you then. Have a great day. Station 51. Station 51. Television is in dire need of help.
emergency. Paramedics John Gage and Roy DeSoto, please report to me TV immediately. LA Squad 51. Dr. Brackett and Nurse McCall are awaiting your arrival. Please stay with me. Just this one thing. It's very important. Emergency. Man, I never thought anybody would find me here. Fire Department, stat. What's the address? On me TV, weekdays at 5, 4 central. 10-4.